partição. said that you'd rather let your deeds speak your time on this earth. Mama, thank you for the way that you raised me, for the way you spoke. Your parlance around the house made me a curious lover of words. And you always pointed me to the writer to use the one. Remember when you had me copy down stories right out of the Asheville Southern Journal, just so I know what it feels like to write well. I made it back home, just like you always said I would. But I never thought that homecoming would be so cruel. You're my mama, and I place my hand here to touch you now and forever. She's home. Hey, Margo, 
Would you go to the movies with me sometime? Oh, I don't want you spending your money on me. <laughs> It'd be cheaper than buying all these books. <laughs> Sorry it took me a while to make it in. I thought it might. How are things with Daddy? He's doing better. It's strange. We both swear we can hear a call out to us sometimes. How are you doing? I started writing again, and that brings me comfort. Oh, a thesaurus. Are you writing out too? No. Max just returned it. He thought it was a book about dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Billy. I read the story you sent me. I was wondering about that. What'd you think? Well, it started out great, but... Uh oh Then it got better and better. I did! <laughs> Billy, you've grown up, and so has your writing. Now, I caught a few typos and retyped it on a heavy bond. In fact, I retyped them all. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Margo, I've been wondering. What if, what if I sent some of my stories to the Astro Southern Journal? Billy, yes! You were always so tentative about it. What made you decide that? I'm ready for my life to begin. I'm ready for it all to start. My heart's about to bust. Don't lead the way. I must follow my own bright star. Do you still have that special delivery stamp up in the We sure do. Oh, I'm not mailing them, Margo. I'm going to hand carry them to Asheville. It seems like a dog on their doorstep till I get published. Good luck, Billy. <laughs>
Hello. Is this the Asheville Southern Journal? Great question. Because this sign is often wrong. <laughs> Don't mind, Daryl. If someone wanted to submit some of their stories to your magazine... Oh, but let me hand them to the nice man. And then wave them goodbye. Oh, wait, 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 goodbye. Because our editor, Miss Alice Murphy, is one of the finest in America. The New Yorker magazine sent someone down here to try to hire her away. But she wanted to stay right here in North Carolina. Well, that's good. Not for young tadpoles like you, it isn't. She once made Ernest Hemingway cry. He lay right there, banged his fists on the floor, and sobbed. Why? <laughs> he used to comment to join two independent clauses. <laughs> Look, I came all the way from Hayes Creek, and I gotta get back, so... Ah, I... aren't we busy? <laughs> Can I pick up my stories tomorrow? You think we're gonna read them by tomorrow, if at all? Look, we don't even take new writers anymore without a whopping letter of recommendation. Now, where is that door? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Thomas Wolfe read them. Thomas Wolfe? He read them and wrote me back saying I had talent. I sent them to him last year. You can leave your stories here. I'm a great admirer of Thomas Wolfe. Thank you. I will tell him you said that. You must be Miss Murphy. I don't have to be, but I am. <laughs> I'll wait to hear from you. I'm William Kane. Ooh, I'm gonna write that down. Will ya? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ames, hand me those stories. I'm gonna read them. Why? Oh, because he's a liar. And liars sometimes make very good storytellers. Now, how about the new submissions? Well, we have several. Uh, this one is from Carl Sandberg. Oh, we should certainly take a look at that. A Tennessee Williams. Very promising new writer yet. <laughs> and this one is from Joseph Algonquin. Another one? Oh, he's always terrible. <laughs> Miss Murphy, I think I should tell you that Joseph Algonquin is my pen name. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you've improved. I'll take a look at it. Don't bother. Um, Miss Murphy, there's a dance at the Shiny Penny tonight. And? And all those officers returning home have been asking about you. When a female walks in that place, there isn't a head that doesn't swivel. No, tonight I want to cozy up to a few unnecessary adverbs and then cut their heads off. <laughs> Miss Murphy, I've heard stories about you. You weren't always such a wallflower. No, not always. Everyone's celebrating now that the war is over. And you should celebrate too. Come with us just this once.
bear some of his legs rolled up, repairing an ice box. Well, if it isn't the little princess of Zebulon, princess, what is the matter with repairing an ice box? Jimmy Ray, an ice box has no moving parts. My granny could repair an ice box. There's ice and a box. <laughs> Showing off your muscles. Oh, keep talking, Alice Burke. I'm curious how your mind works. Okay. You remind me of Adonis. You know who Adonis is? I sure do. He's a Greek <laughs> god. Well, you remind me of him. In fact, you remind me of the myth of Adonis when he repaired the ice box. <laughs> You ever think you might be too smart for this town? All the time. What makes you so sure? I entered an essay contest in Raleigh. First prize was five bucks. I won it. What was it about? I wrote about how there should be a rebirth of Southern writers, all writing about the Southern way. And that's how we make our voices known. Well, I don't know how a group of judges from Raleigh could turn that down. They couldn't. I took that $5 and I put it toward my college fund. How much you got in your college fund? Five dollars. <laughs> you want a biscuit? I wouldn't mind having a biscuit. Oh, your hands are dirty. I don't want to use a dirty biscuit. Well, you better feed it to me. Now, you and I will give me the exact same thought. <clears throat> you got a little wildcat about you, Alice Murphy. What's that book? Right there. F. Scott Fitzgerald, he's a new writer. I know who he is. The beautiful and damned. Is that us, Jimmy Ray? <laughs> damned if I know, but you're sure beautiful. <laughs> I finished, you can keep it. <laughs> My daddy will kill me if he sees the title. Read it under the covers. <laughs> so, who are you going to take to the Rebel State Dance? I don't know yet. Well, I'm standing right here in front of you. <laughs> well, that's not proper, you asking me. I read the book one time that sometimes you have to plant an idea in a boy's head. Uh, well, that might be a pretty smart book. You're a young girl.
shame, shame, shame on me. You made a mockery of the family. Fixing an icebox. <laughs> well, what's that? Application for college. I've been thinking about it. Four years away from home, but everything you need to learn, I'm teaching you here in these walls. Your, father, your grandfather taught me, and I teach you. That chain must not be broken. Well, that I understand, but I thought we discussed this. Sanford, do I sense disinclination? None of my business, man. There's a whole world outside of Zebulon. I want to get to know it. Where are you getting this from? Where's that book you've been reading? I gave it away. Good. Let the jazz age infect someone else. <laughs> Mayor, uh, the Conklins. The Conklins? And Charlotte? Mm -hmm. What about them? Well, the Conklins have a beautiful daughter, Ola. Well, a daughter with resources. <laughs> Stafford, what exactly isn't your business? Now, the Conklins are a family that have produce trucks that drive across the state. And well, we are the second largest purveyor of produce for 300 miles. You want me to marry somebody for her trucks? Now, there's an equation they don't teach you how. Where's the romance in that? Daddy? Romance? I have no comment. No comment. What do you think that was? Just have lunch with her. I couldn't do that. I know their daughter. She's a dumbbell. <laughs> Doesn't have to be her. Let's see here. Oh. Well, the Wilsons and Winston-Salem have a daughter. Oh, and a very active horse farm. I've met her. She's indistinguishable from the horses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, oh, Naomi Wax. Now, she's the daughter of tobacco. Oh, and she plays the banjo. 
<laughs> All right, I know. <laughs> Daddy, I couldn't carry on a conversation with any of them. You don't have to. Have you ever seen me carry on a conversation with your mother? It's not necessary. And that is a tragedy. Son, the way it works is the business is handed down, but we marry conveniently in order to live well. Don't break the chain, right, Daddy? A man's got to do what a man's got to do when a man's got to do what he's got to A well-bred wife with a silver spoon and knife will butter your bread twice as good as you do. I remember I was your age. That's when I was settling down. Your mother and I were I opened up a bank account Who had expected the future To be just like the past You haven't got a clue, sir Please try to understand When I still talk side by side with your grandpa There is just nothing at all to do Protect this letter. Could be very valuable one day. Thank you, ma'am. It is indeed valuable already, seeing as Thomas Wolfe died seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Miss Murphy, you can imagine how difficult it was to get that letter. Are you sure? I'm as sure as he is. He's buried right here in Asheville. Miss Murphy, I'm just doing what I have to. I never would have made here it Here are your stories back, Mr. Kane. Did you read it all? Like I said, here are your stories back. Except for this one, which I am buying from you for $10. But I thought you said... I'm that. not publishing it. 
but I am invested in you. You have a flair, Mr. Kane, not for the scourge of war, but for gentleness and tenderness, the well-timed lie. You write well. You mean that, Miss Murphy? I don't have time to hand out compliments I don't mean. But you will write better when you find your own voice. You need to find a sweeping tale of pain and redemption. No? Bucks, I'm rich! <laughs>
his partner slap the floor, then close the door, pass your girl, then hesitate, round the corner and circulate.
melody that we see around here sometimes affects young women who are 11 weeks pregnant. Oh, Lord. It's not the Lord that did it. <laughs> that only happened once that I know of. <laughs> You've been running around, Alice Murphy. I don't call it running around. Love isn't running around. Does he love you? I think he does. Alice, when you tell him about this, he won't know. Dr. Norquist, everyone has a thousand tiny eyes and one tiny mind. How can trouble and happiness walk hand in hand? We sometimes do. Well, what do I do now? Go back in several weeks. I can handle this all in count for a while. Don't worry, you can trust me with this news. Well, I hope you don't love her. What is it, Daddy? Jimmy Ray, are you the father of Alice Murphy's child? <laughs> it's conceivable. <laughs> Sometimes you are too eloquent. She's gonna have a baby? It appears she is. I should go see her. And what? And tell her I love her. Now, you don't mean that. You may feel like you do, but you're young, Jimmy Ray. Dad, I know those feelings, those misleading ones. I felt them before. But Alice, and she has these special qualities. Special that... qualities. Those special qualities exist in your imagination. Now, the last thing we need is for you to be dragging around a cattle ride everywhere we do business. Now, you let me handle this. Daddy, I will handle this myself. It's my right and my responsibility. Keep your hand in mind. 
Diana Bombay. That's how I feel. I want to set things right. Mary. Will you marry me, Alice Murphy? Here. Am I being sent home? It's been 12 weeks and I haven't posed anything. She's on her way. Oh, that sounds scary. <laughs> Daryl can make happy birthday sound scary. <laughs> Show him, Daryl. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Kane, your latest submission is a bit of a mess. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Mr. Murphy. I'd sent it to Margo and hadn't gotten it back, so I just turned it in. Uh, frankly, I'm getting a little discouraged. No, don't get discouraged. We're going up with Daryl. He's a fine editor. Why did my mouth just go dry? <laughs> How about I work with Lucy? No, I should keep you out of harm's way. <laughs> What do I think of it? Yes. Well, first you need to cut 300 words. 300? Which 300? The superfluous ones. You look shocked. I always thought that was pronounced superfluous. <laughs> and you should begin with your second paragraph. The action begins there. And what do I do with the first paragraph? Turn it into a lullaby because it put me to sleep. <laughs> Anything else? You need to cut the word Twix. Wait, what's the matter with Twix? You don't like Twix? Use between. Why? Because a man wrote this, not Tinkerbell. <laughs> and your second to last paragraph should be cut. What? I cried when I wrote that. Clearly, it's as purple as bad things, but... Miss Murphy! It's true. And then, there's this last sentence. Flows nicely, but I'm curious. 
about. Now, why, why, Mr. King, would you end your essay with the word that 99% of our readers are going to have to look up? Dot, 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 the longing of the human heart and its search for pro pink I did it on purpose, Ms. Murphy. Why? It's the only $5 word in the entire piece. And because of that, I get the impact of the end in twice. The reader lands on a striking word with an elegant cadence. pro pink Then... The reader goes to their dictionary. <laughs> the longing of the human heart and its search for closeness. I'll tell you what. You can sway Daryl, you can sway me. So then there's hope. Let me put it this way nobody has ever swayed Daryl. <laughs> I'm glad the shame is here in the woods and not in our home. Quiet. The rat will wake the baby. Well, thank God it's a boy. It was Eve that tempted Adam, am I right, Alice? You bewitched him. Mr. Murphy, ladies. Well, you came to see your grandson. So this is the child. Oh, isn't he handsome? Yes, yes, fine looking. Oh. Yes. We named him after his father. Isn't that a rad little James? Where is Jimmy Ray? Oh, he's been here cooing over his boy every day. Oh, uh, well, he's on an er errand to uh, Durham. On a Sunday. Stanford, you here to see the baby? Oh, I just love children. <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible and tragic situation must be salvaged. Fortunately, there is a solution, and I'm here to see that it is implemented. A legal and completely anonymous adoption. What is that a solution? A legal and completely anonymous adoption is the only solution. I have the papers drawn up here. Are you aware of this? Somewhat. And I've spoken to Jimmy Ray, and he agrees. He agrees? He certainly does. I doubt that. Did he stand for He sure did. Now you are not a bitch. And only your father has to sign to give consent, while the true father in this case is decidedly un. What you talking about, our daughter? Nobody's taken my baby. Not to be Don't deny him a better way of life when he can grow up with pride. Don't laugh and talk behind his back if you bring home a bastard child.
out. They've already been contacted. You can't. I will sign it. No, you're not. I have to do what I think is right for our no, daughter. Daddy, no!
while Miss Roach is smart for this town. Chuckle Hill is a wonderful school. <coughs> Got a scotch. That came out of the blue. Miss Daddy, I know your father is a tender man. But right now, he is searching the scriptures trying to justify what he did. And the Bible is not full of action. How's <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy ready? Mom. He's going to meet me in Raleigh. Take care of me. 
son takes care of the father, just like the father took care of the son. I'll be back. What's in Chapel Hill? Business, I hope. What do you think? That girl that almost ruins you. You stay away from her. Trouble once, it's trouble always. She and I are bonded. And we have a child out there somewhere. Together, maybe we can find him and lay claim. Find him. And why not? You'll be surprised what can be accomplished. You'll never find that child. What do you mean? You're still holding that suitcase, Jimmy, right? That's better. I took care of my son that night. I made everything right for you, so, so you could go into the world with, without encumbrance. That adoption should have been to my decision. There was no adoption. What are you talking about? I cleansed you. As sure as I was dipping you in baptismal waters. Is this the liquor talking? No one knew the mayor on that train. Businessman passing through, but not with papers in a briefcase. You know, I had, had me something better to relocate. What? What'd you have? I had me a baby in a suitcase. What do you mean? What'd you do? I walked down to the end of that train. Where it was just me and the creature and the clatter of those tracks and I stepped out between the cars. No. And when we passed over the river, I flung it high into the air.
gave Miss Murphy one of my humor pieces. Congratulations, Daryl. What'd she say? She said she really liked it. And could I turn it into a humor piece? <laughs> well, look who just walked in. Do you think he knows this is the kind of place where they sell intoxicating beverages? I'd say he's lonely. Let's find out. So, boy means girl. This calls for a slow dance fizz. It does? It does. I'll have one. Have you ever had one before? I've seen photos. <laughs> so, been lonely since you've been here? Every night I have a date with my typewriter. <laughs> That's not company. This is what a real person feels like in case you forgot. That does feel real. Oh, there's more where that came from. Here you go, Lucy. Don't drink a both at once. Here you go. What you think? It's sweet and tart at the same time. Kind of like Lucy. <laughs> it's called a slow gin fizz, but you don't have to drink it slow. You're a modern woman, Lucy. A bit. So, uh, you want to be a writer? <laughs> Better than that. I want to be a censor. A censor? Why censor? Well, when I was 12, I gave my father a Raymond Chandler mystery novel. I was watching him read it one day, and suddenly his face went the color of a rose. He put the book down, called for my mother, and took her into another part of the house, and locked the door. And I went over there to see what he had just read, and right there, in the middle of the page, was the word, Brazier. <laughs> and I thought, well, this must never happen again. So now, a couple nights a week, I take a manuscript home, fix myself a Manhattan, and search for some hidden erotic content. Would you like to do that with me sometime? Well... Well, what? You got a girl back home? Well, no, uh... I don't know. <laughs> well, don't bring her to Asheville. Well, why not? Because country girls flatten out under the city lights. <laughs> Another round! Really? You are the lady. Lady, please. Not on a Friday night. <laughs>
child dropped off on that day? Not that I recall. Should there be? I would think so. I know this is hard to hear, but 
maybe he didn't care as much as you. If there's truth in this world, then he cared. It's oh. Somehow he would have come looking. It's only me behind this counter for the last 19 years. Well, then that's a puzzle I should have sorted out before. Sun does shine in Raleigh. Hello, Jimmy, eh? Alice. Young Alice. <laughs> Not so young. Young forever in my memory. Is your home? It's nice. I've worked hard over the years. Those are your kids? In a way. They're my sister's kids. Married? No. Nope. Never married. Close a couple times. I guess I would have known. I followed you. I know you never married. I paid attention. You did well up in Asheville. I had some trips there. Looked up at your building. Never went in though. Why? No, oh, you moved on. You published uh, Carson McCullers, The Girl Welt. You did pay attention. I always paid attention to you, Alice. If I didn't, I knew I was in trouble. You were so young. We were. But I wonder. Often, was I old enough to have behaved differently, better? Yes. When I came to Raleigh today, it wasn't my intention to see you. I was at the Hall of Records. The same woman who's been there for the past 20 years. I asked her if anybody else looked for the whereabouts of our child. She said, not one. Not one person. Not you. I did not, Alice. And you never came to see me. Why? Alice. Is it better to hope or to not? Oh, please. When my father died, we discovered it was he who had funded your scholarship. Why? To get you out of town. Guilt. Guilt. <clears throat> Alice, on the train to Raleigh, somewhere in the night, my father took our son and threw him off the train and into the river below.
but, but one thing has remained both constant and changing. And, and I wonder, how is that possible? Anything's possible with people. What is it? Us. <clears throat> there, there's an, an us? There's, there's me. I don't know, I just never really thought of you that way. <laughs> You're supposed to be together, I know. I feel it down deep in my soul. We're never meant to be apart. I keep it here inside of my heart. Just as promised. <laughs> We're almost the same age now. Oh, I'm staying a bit ahead of you. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you, darling. I didn't even know I was worth a visit anymore. Oh, Daddy, how could you say that? Well, through the years, reasonableness has laid its hand on my shoulder, and things I've done in the past don't quite stand up the way they used to. You want to? You want a drink of water? You got any of that hooch? I do. <laughs> How long can you stay? Just one day. Oh, one day, darling? That's a short time to say a lot. You sound like you've been banking words, Daddy. Hey, you got to around here. How oh, am trees. Some nights, it's so quiet, you can hear a leaf fall. And then you can 
tell the color of the leaf just by the tiny crisp crack it makes as it lights on the ground. I don't know that feeling. Sometimes I hear the fiddlers playing. I know they're playing the sound of the wind over the lakes back home. What kind of things can't you talk to Mama about, Daddy? Certainly not about things that occurred 23 years ago. No, not about things that occurred 23 years ago. That had to be the most painful day of your life. It was, wasn't it, darling? It was. Yes. Well, if shame could ever equal pain, I'd say I know how you feel. Because of what I did that day, made it the most shameful day of my life. Thank you, Daddy. I believe that was the final day my own daddy had a hold of me. How I felt after that helped me purge him from me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, not, I'm not asking for forgiveness. Daddy, I forgive you. No, Alice, I, I cannot even forgive myself. I wonder what happened to that boy. You know, Alice? I do, Daddy. He was adopted by a good family in California. Raised with very much love. He was educated, successful. He's a fine young man. That's what I wished for him all along. Maybe your wishes made it so. There's a lady present. Hang on, let me get him on. <laughs> Hello there, son. I, I still salute you. Dad, this is Mr. Oh, I know all about you. Come on, we're standing on the wrong side of the porch. You want a knee high? Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, Miss Murphy, we got a barbershop here in Hayes Creek. He's got your magazine stacked high on the set team. We are readers here. Oh, and Billy will be published in its next issue. Oh, I heard. Mary Lee would be awfully pleased to know that. Mary Lee? That's my mother. Billy, you, you've got some things here. I think uh, some pants and a couple of shirts. Maybe you ought to take them over to your new place. I could use them, Daddy. You must have some wonderful stories about your wife, Mr. King. Maybe Billy should write about her. <laughs> I don't think so. Let's just stick to the whole town with our array of pads and scoundrels. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. My old mail order plaque. Oh, still good? And I don't fish in there. Let me get you something to put in there. Hey, Lucky. Oh, that's lovely, Billy. Reminds me of Zebulon in some ways. You must find some wonderful repose here, Mr. Kane. I do. Miss Murphy? Sorry, Mr. King. Your wife must have died young. Billy's only 23. Well, Mary Lee died last year at 65. She had Billy late in life, which is a rarity these days, considering everybody's getting married and bearing kids before they're old enough to ride a bike. Mm. Uh, Billy, you got some uh, a box of things down in the shed. Well, I don't want to waste Miss Murphy's time with all that. Uh, but look what I found. A good pair of boots. And my whole baby sweater. <laughs> Yeah, finish us some Margo. What is it? I know this sweater. 
I know this suitcase. How? My life was worn away from me and it's... You say you've seen this sweater before? I made it. I knew this day would come. It's you who has a story, Mr. Kane, isn't it? Daddy, what were you talking about? Billy, one night I was out frogging. Only this time, I went a little bit further down the river than I usually went. Where are you at, with your big fat ones? <laughs> Mary Lee and I are fixing to cook you up for dinner. <laughs> oh, oh, there you are, Mr. Toad. Damn it! You made me miss Mr. Ichabod P. Toad. Oh, where are you? Somebody there? Anybody there? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Little Moses! <laughs> Little Moses in the rushes! Oh, good Lord, bangs and bruises! You're in a heap of trouble, little... Fella? <laughs> we gotta get you out of here and get you fixed up. If you came from the sky, then it was the Lord's will that we raise you. And if you came from that train, well then somebody didn't want you.
is she? She's an hour and a half late. That is unlike her. She got a notice from the post office, something about a special delivery. If they can deliver the notice, why can't they deliver the delivery? She went over there with Jimmy Ray to pick it up. Oh, she oh. and Jimmy Ray are getting mighty close. He is attractive, don't you think? Lucy, I do not know how to judge if a man is attractive. <laughs> yes, you do. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Right away. What is it? Oh, it's a hilarious piece by a writer I have never even heard of. Lillian Jones. <laughs> Lillian Jones? Uh, congratulations, Daryl! <laughs> what? Lillian Jones is my new pen name! <laughs> Good for you. Miss Murphy, you have been on a tear lately. That is right. And may I be frank, Miss Murphy? Well, it might take me a little while to get used to calling me that, but sure. <laughs> Miss Murphy, I really miss the old you, the one who brought with you every single day a dark layer of doom and gloom. Oh, all right. Everyone's bound to find out sooner or later. Years ago, I had a child. Daryl, you owe me five dollars. <laughs> Well, turns out, he's alive and well, raised by another family, and he works for me. Works for... Oh my god, it's Daryl! <laughs> <laughs> it's Billy. Billy? <clears throat> When's the last time you've spoken to her? The night he found out. Month now? And it, he hasn't written or called, but... These things take time, don't you think? Well, I'm thinking of taking a trip just to lay eyes on them. I wouldn't know them if I saw them. Uh, hello? Oh my god. <laughs> hello. Hello. Uh, Billy Kane. You're a handsome young man. <laughs> You take after your father. <laughs> and that would be me. Honored to meet you, sir. Lucy, where is that pencil box? The missing pen pencil yes. box? Yes. yes, where is that oh, missing man. pencil box? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Miss Murphy, uh, I came to apologize. You don't have to apologize. I do. <laughs> I was selfish. I only thought about how I was hurt that night. But it wasn't just me. It was everyone else. Oh, really? So I uh, went to the site of my real birth, the, the small cabin in the woods. How'd you find it? Your father loves you very much. He led me to the cabin and told me the story of that awful night. I was torn from your arms. And I understood that truth stands beside us like a shadow. And one day, it merges with us. And until then, we are not truly whole. Billy, you're no doubt your mother's son. <laughs> <laughs> and Lucy, I owe you an apology as well. Perhaps I was a little misleading. We can all start friends. <coughs> <Yep. laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Margo, Billy's fiance. Oh, you are? Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> well, you going to the wedding, Alice? Well, of course I am. He's my son. Not theirs. Ours. Lucy? Put getting married on my itinerary. <laughs> now that's the Miss Murphy we know and love. <laughs> Thank you. 